Recall, transformation functions produce a new resilient distributed data set, or RDD. Resilient distributed data sets are Spark's main programming abstraction. In this lecture, let's cover some popular transformation functions. We're going to cover map, flat map, filter, map partitions, map partitions with index, and sample. Let's begin. First, we need to load some data into memory. This should look like a familiar example. Next, Let's show an example of the map function. The map function takes each element in the RDD and passes it to a function. So in this case, or in this example, we take every line in the baby names file and pass it to the line split function. This is how we were able to create an array of strings. Next, let's move on to the flat map function. Flat map is similar to map, but each input item can be mapped to zero or more output items. So, the function you pass to flat map should return a sequence rather than a single item. Let's take a look at an example. and then let's compare it to map. Flat map is helpful with nested data sets. For me, it helps to think in JSON, which is a nested data set. You know, by the way, these, these examples in the console blurs the line between Scala and Spark. These previous exam examples are showing Scala and not necessarily Spark. In a sense, the only Spark-specific portion of the code example used here is the use of parallel parallelize from the Spark context. When calling parallelize, the elements of the collection are copied to from a distributed data set. Add and collect to flat map and map results were shown for clarity. We can focus on the Spark aspect or the RDD return type of the examples if we don't use collect. Next, let's move on to the filter function. We saw this before in the example. We filtered out every row that contained the name David. As you can re if you recall, we created rows when we split each line into an array of strings. For me, it helped to think of filter as a where clause in SQL, if anybody has experience with that. Next, let's move on to map partitions. You can consider map partitions a tool for performance optimization if you have the horsepower. It won't do much when running these examples on your laptop or desktop. It's the same as map, but works with Spark RDD partitions. Let's look at some code. Let's create a parallelized collection. And then call map partitions. Let's compare that with the default parallelize.
Notice the difference? Let's move on to map partitions with index. Similar to map partitions, but it also provides a function with an int value to indicate the index posi position of the, of the uh, partition. When learning these APIs on an individual laptop or desktop, it might be helpful to show differences in capabilities and outputs. For example, if we change the, uh, this previous example to use parallelized lists with three slices, our output changes significantly. Finally, let's move on to sample. Sample returns a random sample subset of an RDD from an input RDD. Let's run this a few times. We can see the examples are different. We added count to the end of, of the sample call for demonstration purposes to show return the transformation itself. Let's remove the count. So this shows that it's a true transformation call because it returns an RDD. That wraps up this first section. Let's stop here before moving on to the next.